These ETF yeah. buyers, they're just trying to make money. They're buying it because it's going up. They, they, you know, they're not married to it. They're dating it. And they're dating gold if they buy a gold ETF. They're dating, uh, you know, gold no, if they buy it. They're, they're buying it gold. and not holding it the themselves. Public, I told you. Right? The public is they're, selling they're, their gold. They're not buying gold. Hello, welcome to the channel. We have two amazing guests today and we have a fantastic show planned for you guys. We are going to talk about gold and Bitcoin. If you would like to see more of these videos, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, leave us some feedback in the comments down below. In the gold corner, dialing from Puerto Rico, we have Peter. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm doing great. Super happy to have you here. In the Bitcoin corner, dialing from Miami, we have Da Vinci. How are you doing today? Man, I'm five by five. Stoked about this, man. Oh, wow. Peter, you've been my, uh, you know, my hero since the uh, very beginning when I first understood what, uh, you know, what, how the monetary system worked. And uh, I learned that from Ron Paul. And then I started listening to your, your podcasts on Wall Street Unspun. So I'm really excited about being here today. Oh, great. You go way back to the Wall Street Unspun days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, that was actually before Bitcoin came on the scene. Exactly. So the format is quite simple. We have six questions plus a closing statement. Each guest, so each one of you, will have the same amount of time to answer the questions and occasionally the option to rebate the other. So a massive thank you to you both for being here. Honestly, I look up to you both and I'm super excited about this debate. So first topic, money. The earliest evidence of money comes from around 3000 BC in ancient Mesopotamia. In August 1971, President Nixon made the radical decision to cut dollar loose from the gold. So question number one for you, Peter, what is money? At its very basic form, money is the most marketable commodity. Before we had money, it was barter. So the way commerce worked, if you had something and you wanted something else, you had to find somebody who wanted what you had so that you could get what they had. It was a, a mutual confluence of needs. If I was a chair maker and I wanted a table, I needed to find a table maker who, who liked my chairs, right? And then we could, we could exchange. But uh, humans eventually discovered that you could take one commodity that everybody agrees uh, or recognizes its value and they will accept that in exchange for whatever it is they're selling. And so when gold came into existence, let's say, or money uh, was gold, if I made tables, I didn't have to exchange my tables uh, for somebody's chairs. I could give the chair maker some gold and he would take the gold in exchange for my chairs. Um, and you know, so it, it made commerce a lot more efficient because gold was a commodity that everybody needed uh, and, and it's, you know, it didn't decay, it didn't lose value. It was very easy to kind of break it up into smaller pieces so that you knew how much gold did you need to equal a table or chairs or any other commodity. But the, what defined the value of gold was the use case for gold because people needed gold for jewelry, they needed gold uh, for other ornamentation, or they needed gold as a metal to fashion it into, uh, you know, cups or whatever they were, they were doing with gold. And I mean, gold adorned all sorts of things, uh, you know, when it was money. But, you know, before gold was money, gold was a commodity, like any other commodity. It just became um, the most acceptable form of money because it served that purpose better than other commodities uh, that had been tried in the past that didn't work as well uh, as gold. I mean, gold, you could easily put it into a coin and, and fix the denomination and know exactly how much gold was there and therefore how much value was in that gold. Uh, you received something of value in exchange, which was the particular weight of gold that was indicated uh, on that coin that was the coin of the realm and, and, and served as money. Thank you very much. Da Vinci, same question for you. Well, I have to agree. It's exactly right on. Uh, you know, money is just uh, something that we exchange, but it's also more than that. It's actually something that we can store our wealth in. So, for example, when you produce a, a, a lot of crops of food, you don't want to be able to store. You can't store all that food forever for the rest of your life because it goes bad. You have to give it away to other people, but you don't want to just give it away. You want to actually trade it for something else that's valuable. And you couldn't trade it for just, you know, a bunch of chairs from the chair maker. 
course, and Peter's example, you'd want something that would last a long time. So you had to have money that was durable that will last the ages and 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 you have to be able to determine whether or not it would go through a long future uh through your long future not in your only your future uh lifespan but also others if you want to pass it on to somebody else so you you always look for something that was that that would be able to do that because money is not just uh something that's special or has some sport special power it, it is just an aggregate, right? And when I say aggregate, most uh, economists understand uh, what an aggregate is, but the average person doesn't know what an aggregate. A aggregate is just a thing, something in our economy. It's just another thing, just like these these headphones that I that I have or my cell phone. It's just another thing that we can use as a tool in our everyday life, and because it's a tool that we can use in our everyday life, someone can invent a better tool than the one we're using today. And that is what's happening when we see the rise of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. There's an invention. It's just an invention. It's just a way of, uh, of, of saying, okay, well, this is, this is what we need, right? As a tool, we need something to, to be able to transact between other people and to store our wealth for a long term, and so that it, it increases in value, not decreases in value, that we could actually trade it, we could divide it up into small pieces, uh, using the whole thing, because hey, you know what, if we use a whole gold coin, that, that would suck, right? You can't buy a pizza with a whole gold coin. But we could divide a gold into smaller pieces, very small pieces, but the same thing with Bitcoin. But it can even be divisible forever, forever. So even in a smaller economy where where there's not a lot of Bitcoin, right? I know I'm going off <laughs> into Bitcoin world here, right? You could have, there's no such thing as deflationary problems, right? You could actually have very, very tiny amounts of Bitcoin being circulating in that small economy. But money basically has to satisfy three important criteria. It has to be a unit of a medium of exchange, which you can easily you know, uh, uh, transfer it from one person to another, a unit of account so that you can price things in it um, and, and keep a record using, using money. And then it needs to be a store of value. And the, the two main reasons that money needs to be a store of value is one, so you can save it for future use but also so it can function as a medium of deferred payment. So I, I, if, if I buy something and I have to pay for it in 30 days or 60 days, the person who is selling me the product needs to have confidence that when they get my money 30 days, 60 days in the future, it's not going to have dropped in value. Uh, so they can be certain as to what that gold or what that money is gonna be worth when they ultimately receive it, and also so you can have a functioning credit market, borrow it. If I want to borrow money from somebody and pay them back in two years or five years or 10 years, nobody is going to loan me money unless they have confidence that when they get repaid, the money is going to have the same value that it had when it was loaned out. So, you know, those are the things that, that, that money has to have or, or that a commodity has to have. It has to be a unit of ex uh, uh, a meat of exchange, unit of account, and a store of value before it could be considered uh, as as becoming money. Yeah, I agree one hundred percent with that. Um, if you're saying that Bitcoin can't do that, uh, then you're saying that other currency because other currencies can be used as okay. Well, I can borrow from I don't know. Let's just say Argentina peso example. Borrow an Argentina peso and then pay it back, but um, there's no guarantee the value is going to yeah. remain well, there. We should also differentiate between money and currency because the peso is not money. It is currency. So currency is a money substitute. So money is a commodity. So when the governments create paper and, and put numbers on it, they're not creating money. They're creating something that we're using instead of money. And there are two kinds of uh, currency. There is legitimate currency that's backed by real money. And legitimate currency derives its value from the money that backs it up. So that would be paper money backed by gold. But fiat currency is where 
um, there's paper currency backed by absolutely nothing. I mean, it could be backed by illegal tender laws or a government mandate or the obligation to pay taxes, but there's really nothing backing it up. So it's not by definition money because it's not a commodity. So it's a currency, it's a money substitute that can function in place of money, but it's not money itself. It's something different. The people do call it money and, and yeah, but everybody- that doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean it's money, right? There is a distinction between money and, and, and currency. I mean, money has to be a commodity, right? That, that's my point. So uh, paper dollars, you know, backed by nothing, don't satisfy the conditions of money. But they, they, they do work in, as a replacement for money. Instead of using money, we could use currency because currency is a unit of exchange. It is a, a medium of exchange. It's a unit of account. It's not a great store of value. That's the problem with it. But you, you know, you, you, if, if it's going to lose its value at a predictable pace, you, you can use it. You can account for that depreciation with an interest rate. Uh, but the problem with currencies, fiat currencies, is eventually the public loses confidence in them and they collapse. Uh, they, they, they don't work over extended periods of time. They work over shorter time windows, uh, but over a much longer period of time, uh, you know, the confidence is lost because the governments abuse uh, the creation of it. They, they create too much money uh, and they run up too much debt and you, know, you have lots of inflation and then you know, they crash. Da Vinci, you have anything to add or we can move on? I'm not gonna disagree with what he has to say. Everything he said is true, um, but we could debate whether that, that connects to gold, but that's another story. Second topic, which is connected to what you guys are discussing now, fiat currencies. There's been six major world reserve periods, to name a few, Portugal, Netherlands, Great Britain, and United States from 1921 until today. Question number two, this is for you, Peter. Is it okay for the government to manage the money supply? I don't think so. And, you know, all of the other governments, or countries rather, who managed to achieve reserve status for their currency did it under a gold standard. So we're not talking about fiat currencies. It was actual gold. And the United States, when the dollar became the reserve currency, it was originally backed by gold. And if it wasn't backed by gold, in fact, it was redeemable on demand in gold at a fixed quantity. If it wasn't for that characteristic, the dollar never would have became the reserve currency. So really what happened in 1971 when we uh, removed any legitimate monetary backing for our Federal Reserve notes and, and you know, went off the gold standard, it was supposed to be temporary at the time, um, but it became permanent. But the dollar did not lose its reserve status, even though it lost the basis of that reserve status, its, its gold and its commitment to pay gold. Uh, the dollar still stayed as the reserve. Now, the, the world marked it down, so the dollar lost a lot of value. So once we went off the gold standard, the dollar lost a lot of value. So that's why gold went from $35 an ounce uh, to you know, $800 during the 70s. It wasn't gold going up, it was the dollar going down. And if you look at the dollar's exchange rate versus the Deutschmark, the Swiss franc, the Japanese yen, the dollar lost about two-thirds of its exchange value relative to those currencies. The price of everything went up. Oil went from $3 a barrel to $30. You needed 10 times as many dollars to buy a barrel of oil uh, when we were off the gold standard than when we were on it. But even though they marked the dollar down, they didn't count it out. I mean, the world continued to use dollars as a reserve. And that's really the, the source of the problem, because once we had that privilege, we abused it and we you know, became this uh, service sector economy. We destroyed our industrial base and we became an economy that was addicted to credit and imports. And we have this whole phony economy that only can survive if the dollar's reserve status is there to support it. But I think that we're getting to the point where we're gonna lose that status and then everything that we built on it is gonna to come toppling down. I, I agree everything that Peter has said there. Um, government cannot control money, right? Money is a free market item. Just like the government can control whether or not uh, Apple, what kind of cell phones Apple produces, no. Uh, they don't pr to control uh, who, produ who produces shoes, clothing, whatever. And so money is, should be the same thing. They can't control money and control the price of money through the interest rates. This is ridiculous. Um, only individuals 
with their uh, collective uh, desires and needs at the time can really decide what the price of money is, what money is, and how it works. In fact, we should be deciding what money is. Whether it is be gold, Bitcoin, or dollars, we should decide on that and not have the government tell us what it is. In fact, money was invented by people, by people needing to use something to store their wealth in. Government just took it over because they felt that, wait a second, you know, some people cheated on this, right? They debased the money, right? They printed, they came up with fake money and, uh, you know, cheated people out of their wealth um, throughout time. So, you know what, we're going to take it over and we're going to make sure that nobody cheats. But, you know, then the government started to cheat. So obviously, right, having, trusting the government with money, trusting them with gold as a money, right? Because, you know, they will want us to go back to the gold standard, right? And uh, we have to trust them again to not take away the gold backed by the, 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 um, the digital money or paper money. This is not going to work again because we've seen what they've done over and over again. They take away the value of the currency, which is the money that we use to transact with on a day-to-day -day basis, which is backed up with the real money, which is gold, every single time, yeah. every single time. Yeah. So now yeah. we need something better to actually not prevent the government from taking it away from us, taking away the real value from us. It really hurts the poor, the middle class in major ways. Yeah, you know, governments recognized how important honest money was, that ca a counterfeiting was a capital offense. I mean, you, you, you got the death penalty if you you know debase the coin if you if you put if you put some base metal in a in a gold coin and tried to circulate it uh you know if they found you they you 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 were you were sentenced to death so they 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 knew how important it was that that, that people could trust money and that they knew the value of, of each coin based on the weight of metal that was in that coin it had to the weight had to match what was written on the coin because otherwise you were defrauding people because they were not getting the true value uh, that they were bargaining for. They weren't getting the quantity of gold uh, that they wanted in exchange for whatever goods or services that they sold in exchange for that gold. Peter, this one is for you. With the Bitcoin ETF launch this year, we can see a clear demand and desire. Do you have any problem with your customer investing into it? I don't want my customers to ultimately lose a lot of money, which I think they would do. You know, it's interesting, we're doing this debate and both gold and Bitcoin are very close to record highs. I mean, gold is around 20, 2,110-ish. It's about $20, $25 below its all-time record high. The gold ETF, GLD, which is very popular, is at a new all-time record high today. The reason the high for gold is higher than the high for GLD is because gold hit its high in the evening. On a, I think it was a Sunday night. And so the ETFs weren't trading. And, and so... But this is the highest price that gold has traded in, a, in our time zone when the U.S. markets were trading. And so it's a new record high for uh, GLD. And Bitcoin is above 66,000. I, I think the record high is around 69. I mean, it's up there somewhere. Didn't quite hit 70. But uh, Bitcoin is almost at a record high, too. But there are two very different factors that are driving these markets. They're, they're not correlated in any way. and They've got nothing to do with one another. Gold is moving up as an inflation hedge, as a uh, you know, monetary metal. Uh, and I think uh, central bank buying has been the main driver because retailers have been selling. We've, been, we've seen significant retail selling of gold over the past uh, couple of months. Uh, and the gold mining stocks. I mean, many gold stocks, Newmont Mining, the biggest gold stock in the world, hit a five-year low last week. I mean, I've never seen where you have the gold stock hitting a five-year low and then you know gold almost at a record high uh, a day or two later. But the public has been moving out. It's been big money, uh, uh, central banks that have been buying, and they continue to buy gold as a replacement for the dollar. You have this de-dollarization trend. Uh, you have foreign central banks wanting to uh, uh, reduce their reliance on the dollar as a reserve, and they're replacing gold uh, as, a, as, as a monetary reserve rather than, rather than dollars. Whereas what's driving Bitcoin is the speculation that I think is largely driven uh, from the ETFs. Uh, there's just a lot of hot money that is going into these ETFs now. Uh, that is now, obviously, the ETFs have to go into the market and buy Bitcoin. And so most of the buying from Bitcoin is coming from 
the inflows into these ETFs. Uh, but I think this is a lot of speculative money. I think even some of this money came out of the gold stocks. I think that's why gold stocks you know, dropped about 12% one week when the price of gold didn't even go down. You saw some of that. But I think that this is going to switch. And I think when the uh, ETF buyers try to get out, as they will, I think these are short-term traders. A lot of them probably have stops beneath the market where if the, G if the ETFs go down, they're just going to automatically sell. I think when this happens, it's going to overwhelm the spot market. I don't think there'll be the liquidity there uh, to absorb the selling. I think the market is going to crash harder than we've probably ever seen Bitcoin crash. And we've seen, I mean, just last week, it, whereas one day it went down $5,000 a coin in, in about you know 30 seconds. Uh, but it recovered. But I think there's a potential for a complete collapse. And I, I know that in the past, when Bitcoin has come into a lot of selling pressure, uh, we've seen a huge increase in the supply of Tether. All of a sudden, there's all these new Tethers around and people use Tether to buy Bitcoin and stop the decline. Well, when the ETFs sell, the buyers can't pay with Tether. The ETFs need actual dollars to redeem the shares. So I think it's going to be very difficult when you have all of this selling coming in and you don't have the speculators uh, to take the other side of the trade. So that's why I said the people piling into these ETFs are going to lose a lot of money because it's one thing to get into the ETFs. It's going to be a whole other thing to try to get out. Nice. Thank you, Peter. Uh, da Vinci, this one is for you. Why you should invest in Bitcoin? You should invest in Bitcoin is, is several full, several reasons. Well, one is that central banks are going to be buying it next year because they're going to they've changed the rules so that central banks can place Bitcoin on their balance sheet, just like they place gold on their balance sheet. They don't place silver on their balance sheet. They don't place oil on their balance sheet. They don't place uh, corn on their balance sheet. Gold is the only commodity that they have on their balance sheet. And now the commodity of Bitcoin is going to be on their balance sheet. Well, at least they will be allowed to do so. Whether or not they do it, it's totally up to them. So that's one reason why you're seeing uh, Bitcoin as uh, a good method of storing your wealth. But also the reason why you see the speculation that Peter talked about is because people are speculating on something. What are they speculating on? that Bitcoin will be the money. Bitcoin will be the money. Why is that? Why are they speculating that Bitcoin will be the money? Because for the first time ever, we have an asset that's fixed in supply, that's divisible, right? That's um, fungible, right? So it means that you can, every Bitcoin that you have is the exact same Bitcoin that uh, somebody else has. And, and you know exactly how much there is. Your money, is whatever Bitcoin you have divided by 21 million. That's it. There is no complicated, well, how much wealth do I really have? Because, you know, uh, they could mine more gold. Every, they mine 2% right now, more gold. And if gold were to go up to $65,000, like uh, Bitcoin is today, actually went to 66,000 as we speak. Now, the gold, they would be finding more gold, more than 2% per year, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Right? Oh. <laughs> this is <just> no way. <laughs> so, because if there are, a lot of industries would change to find gold because of the, that, that huge valuation. And so we just produce more gold. Whilst if Bitcoin, no matter what price Bitcoin goes to, there's no way to get more out. The only way to get it is from somebody who else who has it, period. So once you understand that and you're like, hmm, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> you run and buy. And that's why we're seeing prices continue to go higher and higher. And you have these maxis like myself, like the host, who will hold Bitcoin no matter what. We are going to die on this cross we will yeah, buy you, you bitcoin will. <laughs> no matter what if 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 those people dump it on the on the etfs we're glad to buy it because we understand what it's going to do yeah. they might not understand it and if they sell it well there's just not enough understand. of you <laughs> when you have a fixed supply of something right and 
you know, you have a set of people who understand what it is, such as Michael Saylor and, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and now Larry Flink of Black Rock. Yeah, he's, he, they he's understand like, he's a modern day Captain Ahab. <laughs> <laughs> but you, look, you can see that people are going to buy this. Let me say something here um, about it. So there, there's a big difference, right, between gold and Bitcoin. So when you have gold, when you own gold, you actually own something. You own the most useful metal on the periodic table. You own a metal that can be used in all sorts of things and is used uh, in all sorts of industries and will probably be even more useful in the future when people discover new ways to use gold uh, that they haven't even used it for before. As, but when you own Bitcoin, you own nothing. You know, yes, you own a, a, you know, you know you own one Bitcoin, one of 21 million, but you own one of nothing. Yes, as long as people want to buy nothing, then you can sell your Bitcoin to those people. And so as long as there's buyers, you, you could sell. But if people stop wanting nothing, if they stop believing in nothing, then you can't sell. Nobody wants it and the price crashes. That doesn't happen with gold because gold is in demand for its uses. And so there will always be buyers for gold. Now, also, you mentioned that central banks will be buying gold as a reserve asset. No, they won't. I, I can't imagine any central bank dumb enough to do that. The reason central banks have reserves is so they can protect their currencies in case their currencies are falling and they need to uh, withdraw those currencies from circulation. So if I'm a central bank and my currency is going down, I have to buy back units of my currency, and I do that with my reserves. I can do it with my dollars or my euro or my yen, but I have to have something that's stronger than my currency to back up my currency that I could, that I'm, that's reliable. Gold is very reliable. It's a big, deep market, liquid market. I, I know I can sell my gold if I need to to buy back my currency, but if you put Bitcoin on a central bank balance sheet, Bitcoin could crash more than your currency at any moment in time. You can't use Bitcoin as a as you know a reserve for a currency uh, when the Bitcoin can crash at the moment that you need it. Meanwhile, okay, central so banks are buying gold right now. They're buying gold on their and adding to their reserves right now. They're not buying Bitcoin. They are buying gold. But yes, if you want to gamble that they'll buy gold in the future, go ahead. I think it's a bad bet. I'd rather own what they're buying right now, <laughs> and and they're going to keep buying it. And you're saying that gold is something and i also agree to that and the reason why i did the reason why i did is because when you have gold as an asset right most people don't own the gold directly they own it through a third party and when they do that they have nothing because it's just a ledger entry well, the I third guess that's party the same applies the to the people who own right? the bitcoin etfs then 100 percent, 100 percent but they can choose to own Bitcoin directly. They can do that. It's as hard as using your cell phone. If you know how to use a cell phone, you know how to use, you can, you can learn how to use Bitcoin directly. Uh, you just choose not to, right? Uh, and that's all it is. And there's a little bit so, of gold in those cell phones. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is. But we're talking about uh, the unit of account. What's most important is the unit of account because people don't care about like i don't want to hold a safe full of gold per well i do <laughs> personally <laughs> but most people other than me don't want to hold a safe full of gold right they want to actually be able to transact with it easily and rapidly through some sort of means of like token that represents the gold like a dollar that used to represent gold or the um the, your bank account that has numbers in it that represents your dollars, right? But also could represent the gold that you hold, right? But you hold nothing. You hold a promise, you hold a credit note. When you do that, you don't hold the real asset. With Bitcoin, you can hold the real asset and no one could take that away from you. And although it's just a ledgered number, it's a correct number. It's a number that no one can steal. No one can say, no, 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 now you don't got nothing. Oh, no, no, no. Now it's frozen until you prove yourself uh, uh, innocent. It is a ledger entry and that's what you want. You want the ledger entry because you want speed of 
transacting to transactions. You want speed to be able to, you want easy portability of the money was another key thing, a factor for money, because gold was portable, it was more portable than, you know, chickens or, you know, corn or whatever. Gold was portable. But now Bitcoin's even more portable. I go through the airport with b millions of dollars, right? Millions of dollars of Bitcoin and nobody knows I have it. Try to do that with dollars or gold. You can't. It's just not possible. Today, it is possible to transfer wealth with you wherever you go easily. In fact, when I moved to Dubai, I moved, I brought my gold with me and I, they wanted to confiscate it when I got, came through the airport. It was only because the, the, uh, the person who recognized me was I able to pass through. Bitcoin has value because people believe it has value. Like Da Vinci believes it has value because he thinks people are going to want it because he thinks it, it's scarce. But I don't really think it's scarce. I think there's, you know, 2.1 quadrillion Satoshis out there or whatever it is. <laughs> it's not scarce at all. There's hundreds of thousands of Satoshis for every man, woman, and child on the planet. Um, so there's plenty of Satoshis, I mean, if you need any, but nobody needs any. That's the problem. Um, you know, with gold, uh, people need gold and you need certain quantities. If there's a job that you need to do, it requires a specific quantity of gold. You know, I've got... Uh, a gold watch that I'm wearing. Um, I've got uh, gold rings, right? So if the jeweler wants to make this ring, he knows how much gold he needs to buy to make that ring. But, you know, nobody needs any particular quantity of Bitcoin for anything because you can't do anything no matter how many you've got. Um, it, it, so it's just all, you know, a, a mass delusion that we're all going to just pretend that something that has no value has value. And we're all going to buy it. And we're all going to hold it. Like Da Vinci said, he's going to hold his Bitcoin until he dies, which is, you know, what everybody has to do because they can't sell because there isn't a new group of buyers that is going to allow the current group to get out. Yes, a small number can sell. And that, I think that's what's happening. I think the smart money is taking the other try, side of this uh, ETF trade. I mean, somebody is selling their Bitcoin, right? Because... The amount of Bitcoin being mined is tiny compared to the inflows into these ETFs. So you have to ask yourself, who's selling, right? We know who's buying, right? Mom and pops uh, who are, you know, buying uh, now in their IRAs or in their brokerage accounts, right? They're quick, they're clicking a mouse or whatever they're doing, and they're buying some of these ETFs, and they're, you know, being led into it by all the promotion and all the hype and all the commercials and all the nonstop coverage and everybody telling them that they're going to get rich. All they have to do is buy these ETFs and Bitcoin's going to 300,000, 500,000, a million. It was the same type of hype we had three years ago when Bitcoin was up above 60,000 and the next thing you knew it was below 20,000, right? They had ads at the Super Bowl, all kinds of hype was going on uh, to get people in. But who's selling? all this Bitcoin. Somebody's selling their Bitcoin, right? <laughs> but also, who is going to buy when the current group of buyers want to sell? That is the risk. When the guys that are rushing in to these ETFs want to get out, and they'll, they'll leave quickly. You know, they could put limits, stops, market, get me out, get me out. We've never seen this. Because when people were selling the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust before it was an ETF, it didn't matter how many shares you sold. It didn't affect the spot Bitcoin market. It just caused Grayscale Trust to go to a discount. And they went to a discount of 50% to NAV because people wanted to get out of their shares. But now when the people are trying to redeem, they're selling their ETFs, all those ETFs have to go into the spot market and dump their Bitcoin at the market. And if, you know they have to sell that day because if you sell your ETF, the seller needs his money that day. And so they got to get out no matter what. And if I was in the spot market and I saw all this Bitcoin coming for sale from the ETFs, I would get the hell out of the way. No one's going to want to get in front of that truck. When you know, hey, this, th this fund has got a bunch of Bitcoin that they have to sell today. They have to get out today. They have no choice. No matter how low the price is, they have to take it. I'm going to say, well, I don't want to buy my Bitcoin. I'll give you, I'll give you 100 bucks. I don't know. I mean, the market is not going to be there. It's just going to be an a, a complete implosion 
Uh, and, you know, <laughs> when is that day going to start? I mean, you got me, right? Because as long as the money is flowing in, it's not a problem. It's just a problem when it, some of it tries to get out. I, I have to agree, disagree there where there's going to be a cre- complete implosion because there's a lot. Here's the thing. But why do people want Bitcoin is because they know it's going to be the money. They know for sure that, you know, it's 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 a system of Most, a not, unit the, not the ETF buyers. For sure. Maybe you do. Yes. Maybe some of the hardcore hodlers. These ETF yeah. buyers, they're just trying to make money. They're buying it because it's going up. They, they, you know, they're not married to it. They're dating it. And they're dating gold if they buy a gold ETF. They're dating, uh, you know, gold no, if, they buy, they're if they're buying, buying it and not holding it the themselves. Public, I told you, right? the public is selling they, they, their gold. They're not buying gold. They're getting rid of their yeah. gold. Here's the same. At the same time, I think it's a good idea to get into Bitcoin and sell their gold and get into Bitcoin that, that's, uh, that, because that's, 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 that's what people because, are doing. They're making a big mistake. <laughs> it's not a big mistake. You think your your mom and pop investors are are pretty smart? <laughs> Most of them holders. are bag holders in the at the top. There are always the bag holders at the top. So yeah, example, well, I remember you think you're buying Bitcoin. Bitcoin could be at the top. I remember getting phone calls at the seventeen thousand dollar mark from people and telling me, "Hey, should I buy Bitcoin now?" Uh, back in twenty seventeen, and I told them no, but they did it anyways, right? I said that, you know, it's going to go down, right? It's going to go down heavy. But they, because it was a speculative bubble, short term speculative Just like bubble now. at that point. It's a bu- speculative right? bubble now. It's still early. It's still too early for that. It's right? early. There, it's late. It's not, it's very no. late. It's not early. <laughs> it's not early here. We're going to see Bitcoin at a lot higher prices because uh, a lot of, uh, uh, retirement funds, institutional players wanted to get into this market but couldn't because of the current rules in the United States. And with the ETF, this allowed them to, to gain access to this market. Yes, most of them don't understand what they're buying. But uh, if they ever do, if they ever figure it out, oh boy, they're holders for life. <laughs> oh, not to, just for life, but until everybody reckon, everybody else recognizes, wait a second, this is a better uh, asset to use as money because you can't use it for anything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't use it for money either because it's yes, not a can. store of value. It's not a good medium of exchange and it's not a unit of account. It's, it's the fact that they had to create these ETFs is proof that it doesn't work. Because the whole purpose of Bitcoin is not to have a third party, to have self-custody, to have to not be part of Wall Street, to have to not pay a storage fee. But the Bitcoin ETFs defeat the very nature, the very purpose of Bitcoin, which actually is proof that Bitcoin can't even do what it was created to do. That's not but the price has gone up anyway. Whilst they're holding the Bitcoin, right, those people, they were making a mistake by using an ETF. That's just the way it is, right? Because eventually the government is just going to take it, right? Eventually, right? If, if Bitcoin is, everybody forces Bitcoin to be money because people see it as that, then what is the government going to do, right? They're going to say, well, wait a second, we don't have any of that. It, there's a big pot over there. I'll take that. Here's my dollars, <laughs> right? So that's coming, and then, right? And then what is the government going to do with it? They're going to try to get rid of it. <laughs> no, like, because they'll just still use it to pay people. They'll pay staff. But then the people that get it are going to have that's to sell it. Money. Someone's going to have to sell it if they want to buy something. But you're going to go to your grave with your Bitcoin. So you don't care what the price is because you're never going to use no. them. You're I'm going to use them when, them when people realize that it's money. When it's but they may not. It's money, they may it's never realize that. Super high, and they will. It's it. You will. People will. It just takes time. Well, people it's, look, will understand it. It's, it just it's takes been time. about twelve or thirteen years, and it hasn't happened yet. I don't know why it would oh, yes, be it has. Any different. Yes, it has. Because here's the thing: no, it has a lot of a lot of wealthy people who actually hated Bitcoin when they first heard it decided they were like they were very vocal and very loud about how it was useless and and, and garbage and stuff like that and then they changed tunes in fact the biggest uh, person to change tunes is michael saylor he went from oh my god this is a waste of time to oh my god i gotta buy everything that i well, possibly you know, can I think they got suckered in. It was the the greed got the best of them, you know, because it it went up and then they they threw in the towel and capitulated. Uh, But, yeah, there are a lot of people who have converted. But a lot of people like myself uh, have 
remain steadfast in their beliefs, despite the fact that the price has gone up because other people have been foolish enough to buy it. But I'm not going to change my opinion just because some other people did. Um, I feel sad about that yeah. because you know what? <laughs> you were my hero. And when, I, when you first said, well, I'll be when your they hero first introduced again, Bitcoin. When, when Bitcoin collapses. <laughs> when you first, when Bitcoin was introduced to you, on your Wall Street on Spun, I was like, oh my God, I was so excited. It was like $6 or something like that. I was like, I can't believe it. He's talking about Bitcoin. And uh, Yeah, I know. If I, would, if I would have bought Bitcoin back then in any kind of serious way, and I certainly had the means to do it, yeah, I'd be a billionaire today, assuming I didn't sell it. But, you know, I mean, I didn't do that. So there's no point. There's <laughs> no point in uh, thinking about no, coulda, no. woulda, coulda, shoulda. But uh, just because I didn't buy it back then doesn't mean I'm dumb enough to buy it now. No, no, I'm not saying you should have bought it. I, I was just thinking maybe you yeah. should have understood what it, I was. A little I understood it. Didn't I just didn't understand that other what, people would what be so is. confused and, and would bid up a crazy bubble. It's the ultimate bubble. I took advantage of the weakness in gold stocks, and I put a lot more money into gold stocks last week as people were selling them to buy Bitcoin ETFs, and I got some great prices. And I'm already having nice gains, uh, but I'm sure the gains will be much bigger uh, in, in several days, several weeks, you know, <laughs> certainly several years. But yeah, so I, 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 uh, I bought what I thought had value, but I'm not going to pile into a Bitcoin mania. I'm not, I'm not the greater fool, and I'm not going to be left holding anybody else's baggage. <laughs> What happens if you become the greater fool and Bitcoin becomes money and everybody's using it? Well, right, then I guess I would have been wrong. 15 years. I, I see no indication that that's going to happen. In fact, more companies were advertising that they took Bitcoin in 2017 20, than they do now. <laughs> so it's already lost that appeal. Yeah, but it will come back because here's the thing. When we first invented electricity or cars, people had the same kind of reservations you did. They didn't have the foresight to say, yes, there's going to be gas stations. Yes, there's going to be roads. Yes, there's going to be power stations for the electricity. Yes, we're going to have these AC electricity and to step it down to DC. Yes, we're going to have all these things. They didn't see what was going to come in the future because of what it does. What they, does Bitcoin do? Okay, define a unit of account. Well, for a unit account, it would be pricing. So pricing uh, products, pricing services in the monetary unit. So for, for Bitcoin to be a unit of account, you'd have to go into a supermarket and you'd have to see all, this, all these products on the shelves and the prices would be in Satoshi's. You know, no, but even the people that use Bitcoin don't price stuff in Bitcoin. If they ever use it, there's not that many, but they, they calculate what they need in dollars or euros or yen, whatever. And then they figure out at that point in time, you know, how many Bitcoin, how many Satoshis do I need to have this equivalent dollar amount? And then they make it a deal. They don't do the deal based on Bitcoin because Bitcoin is way too volatile to, to think of anything in terms of Bitcoin because you never know the price is all over the place. So it's not, it's not a, uh, a, a unit of account. And I don't think it'll ever be stable enough for anybody to use it as a unit of account. Plus also, you don't really know, like for gold, there's centuries of data where you know, you know how much gold should you need to buy a bushel of wheat, a barrel of oil, right? Uh, there's relationships between commodities that over long periods of time, you can look back at. And so therefore you can know, hey, is oil cheap is oil, or is it expensive, right? Relative to, to gold. But you have no relationships between Bitcoin and anything. <laughs> it hasn't been a long, around long enough to even form a relationship, but there are none because there's no use. Uh, you know, you can compare the use for gold. Okay, I use gold to conduct electricity, to make, uh, to make jewelry. You know, I use oil to power uh, machinery or do this and you can you can compare the relative values of those relative uses but you have nothing to compare bitcoins used to because you don't use it for anything meanwhile there's over twenty thousand other cryptocurrencies and they create them all every day there's a new one i mean so what <laughs> you know there's all this stuff that's coming the only thing that's unique about bitcoin is blockchain and you don't need bitcoin in fact the best thing is to tokenize gold Right, so if you want the best of both worlds, if you want uh, gold 2.0, modern day gold, digital gold, you take real gold and you tokenize it and you put it on a blockchain and now I can send my gold around the world instantly for nothing and we can transact in it. So gold, by using modern technology, 
is far better as a medium of exchange than it ever was. It's easier to use gold as money now than before Bitcoin came on the scene. The future of money is still gold. Gold with blockchain, that's gold 2.0, not, not Bitcoin. Bitcoin is tulip mania 2.0. I disagree on that one because you hold a token which only only the law states whether or not no, you have access to that gold the, or the, not. Look, if I have a safety deposit box at a bank, right, I own what's in that safety deposit box. The bank is just keeping my stuff safe in that the box. So when you own a gold token, you own the gold. The token is just your a receipt for that gold. It's like if I go to the, to the to a restaurant and I give somebody my coat and they give me a claim check, right? I still own my coat. My the, the evidence of ownership is my claim check. So that when I leave the restaurant, I give the, the coat girl or guy my my claim check and they give me back my coat. The the restaurant doesn't own the coat because they have possession of it. I own it. And my claim check is evidence of that ownership. So that's what happens when you have gold. If it's stored by a third party, they're just storing it for you. And they've given you a token that says the gold that we have belongs to you. You have a legal claim to that gold. We're just storing it for you. <laughs> that's what's happening. Okay. Yeah. okay, so their claim check thing that you stated, right? The person who holds what you, you have given them, right? can can even though it might not be illegal might be legal for them to do it sell that asset to someone sure else. they can steal it yeah they can they steal, can steal it. it yes yes and then all of a sudden well let's just say they do that right and you have the proof of ownership right where one way or another you go wait a second here dog give me my my thing well you could take them to court in order to get your asset Right. And then you have to yeah. wait a certain amount of time for that to happen. And guess what? They don't have to give you that asset back. They can just give you the dollars, the legal tender, which is printed. So they just have to um, find a way to print some more. Right. Which anyone who could borrow money can print. And that's it. They give you not your asset that you that, that's behind that token, but the paper dollars, which means nothing. So, well, the, but this the, is but the, the danger. The electronic, this is the danger. Electronic Bitcoin mean nothing too. It actually is the thing itself. Just like the uh, token of gold is nothing, the uh, dollars are nothing, but this is fixed in supply and absolute. For example, if you write down that I have X, Y, Z of something, right? How do you know that somebody has not changed that? Say, okay, well, now I'm going to erase it and say I have. 20 more no. instead of yeah. having somebody like change what's on the ledger bitcoin actually is the ledger is absolutely no no, perfect. I, no I, I get all that out of change I, the ledger i i accept the fact that it's a beautiful system for keeping track of the nothing that you own and you know exactly how much nothing you have uh but at the end of the day it's nothing <laughs> you have nothing now I did a really funny, I don't know if you saw this, I put it up on YouTube, it's funny, it was because, I don't know if you're old enough to remember the Sesame Street, but this guy, you know, sold I saw Ernie, that video. it was Ernie and Bert, and he sold Ernie air in a bottle, and he, he paid a nickel for this air, and then he was like, hey, you gotta buy this, you know, and and then, you know, he lost his air, and he was like, it was very funny, but it, it made me think of Bitcoin. It's on. So I, I it's made on. a little video. Of, of a guy trying to sell Ernie some Bitcoin. And he was like, it was just like in a bottle. But when people stop believing in it, that's the problem. You know, that's why you can't have any confidence in it because you don't know that people are going to keep believing in it in the future. Just because they believe something now, that doesn't mean they're going to believe it later. That's 100% true. But the reason why I believe and I see and I think and I know that people will understand and see it is because money is just a concept. We don't care. Most people not just don't concept. have <laughs> don't those people do not care right about having physical dollars anymore. They most time most of the times they just use the money that's in the bank. They use a credit card, they use a debit card and that's it. It's all it is is a ledger at the bank is what they're using. And they're used to that. The difference is the ledger money in your bank is created to infinitum whilst the ledger money on bitcoin cannot and it's an absolute it's fixed like gravity 
right? It is fixed. I'll even accept that, which is not, you know, we don't know, right? I mean, we think it's fixed. Maybe it's not. Maybe something changes. Maybe uh, AI. I don't know. But I'll, I would just, even, even going under the assumption that it is a hard 21 million, and there's no way it's ever going to be a surprise, and all of a sudden there's more, right? Even if you accept that premise, I still don't see the value because it's not about supply only. It's supply and demand. And if there's no demand, it doesn't matter what the supply is. <laughs> the price is going to crash if nobody wants it. You know, even if there's only one Bitcoin in the world, if nobody wanted that one Bitcoin, it's worth zero. That's true. And the, the issue is that I believe and I see that people understand yeah. that our current system money of money doesn't work and allowing governments to control it doesn't well, work. Well, you, you yeah. understand yeah. it. I understand okay. it. Some okay. of the people buying Bitcoin understand that. But most people are clueless, right? They have no idea that money, our money doesn't work. <laughs> they, they, but they will, get, they will get it. Most people, when they come into Bitcoin, they don't understand why they're doing it. They just see price number go up. But then once the number go down, they ask questions. So why is it going down? And then they become Bitcoiners for life. They become lifers like me. But then what do you do when you run out of money and all you got is Bitcoin and you're hungry? And you got to pay your rent. What are you going to do? <laughs> Bitcoin. Well, I'd be able to pay my rent with Bitcoin. They, they, they don't want Bitcoin either. Yeah, but then you're looking at right now. I'm looking at the future. If you speculate on um, the cars, on, on Ford doing well in the future, right when I first invented the car, you, would, that's, that you could have said that that was a bad bet. But yeah, but you're admitting the then that Bitcoin is a speculation, right? It's, its value is yes. based on if certain things happen in the future. If Bitcoin, by its nature, is speculative, it can't be money. It's not money now. So if you're buying Bitcoin, you're buying something that is not currently money, but you're betting that in the future it will be money. But it's not money now. It's not a store of value now. It's not a safe haven now. It is a gamble. It is a speculative token. So if you want to speculate, you can buy it. But if you want to save, if you want to save haven, if you want to store value, don't touch it <laughs> because you could lose everything in Bitcoin. We haven't lost everything yet. So I've, well, we've all so done far. well, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, some people have, but yeah, you know, it depends on where you get in and out and whether you, you know, use margin. Or I had some Bitcoin. I lost it all. So <laughs> I didn't buy it. Fortunately, I got it given to me, but I still lost it. My so brother had some Bitcoin that he bought on Coinbase and he changed his phone. And he doesn't have his authenticator, so he has no he has no way to get into his coin Coinbase wallet. He's been trying to get in for he can't figure out how to get so he doesn't have his Bitcoin either. Yeah, I mean people are gonna make mistakes, but Coinbase has it, so it doesn't matter. Coinbase is gets to, to keep that Bitcoin. So um, <laughs> that's not right. That's they, they actually have it because they have they, they wasn't like it's not a, it's not on the ledger. He had it on at Coinbase. And so Coinbase effectively has it and Coinbase should give it back to him. I mean, they right? should be able to identify you. And yes, and, and, yes, and, Coinbase <laughs> definitely they can get it back for him. Uh, that's just going to be a pain in the butt for him. But that's but it is possible. But once if he were to lose his, his seed phrase, once he owns Bitcoin directly, that's different. The, and yeah. for example, see, the Bitcoin I, that you lost yeah. is still there. That. It's still there. You can see it. You just can't well, move it. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't even know how to see it. I don't know what my, I don't know what the wallet, I mean, I, all I had was a pin. Eric Voorhees, who set my wallet up, uh, gave me the pin. That's all I remember getting. I don't remember getting a password or a seed phrase. I got a pin. <laughs> so that was it. And I lost, I lost yeah. it all. Yeah, back then they, they, they didn't give you a seed phrase. It was, it was a mistake. They, they force, now they're starting to force people to, hey, here's a seed phrase. There you go. Take that, write it all down, put it in the safe and stuff like that. So yeah, that, yeah. Uh, you don't uh, you don't lose those bitcoins because uh, although you won't lose the bitcoins will still be there forever. No one can yeah. touch it, basically. I wanted to ask you to close to make a closing statement, but you kind of did it anyway. So <laughs> uh, it was uh, it was fantastic. I mean, thank you so much. I I have so much respect for you both. I appreciate you coming on the show and talking to each other. It was great. Yeah, yeah. Well, my thank pleasure. you. It was fun. Five for that, everybody. <laughs> Thank Bye. you, Peter. Thank you, Davici. Bye. Bye-bye.